right, so while I'm uh, flushing the sprayer out, I thought I'd do an equipment spotlight on the pasture sprayer that we've got. This is a uh, Ag Spray 300 gallon trailer type sprayer. It has an Oklahoma kit on it, which means that it has boom and boomless capabilities. I don't know why they call it Oklahoma kit, not Tennessee kit or Indiana kit or what. So I've got both capabilities. It's uh, like I said, a 300 gallon tow behind. What we had before was a 200 gallon homemade three point hitch with a boom jet, T jet nozzle, which is just big old cluster nozzle that would just throw it everywhere. And it worked pretty good, but putting 200 gallons on the back of this, uh, this tractor and getting on hillsides could be sketchy at times. So I opted for the trailer model. And I thought, well, you know, if I'm gonna do that, I just might as well go up 100 gallons, go bigger, go home. And I saw this apparatus in a magazine for sale that a um, dealer was advertising. And I called them about it and they said they didn't have it anymore. So I got to checking around and looking to see what I wanted. And Harold Stafford over at Circle S uh, Farm Supply in, in uh, West Tennessee, I bought a ton of panels from uh, those folks and they're just great great people to deal with and he said he had pasture sprayers uh, to provide so I asked him kind of told him what I wanted and he said yeah I can get it they call it Oklahoma kit don't know why they call it Oklahoma kit but uh, Harold uh, got me one in I bought this on the uh, TAP program the Tennessee Ag Enhancement program so that's that's a wonderful little grant system that Tennessee's got that that uh, kind of helps farmers uh, share the burden, the cost of uh, upgrades and improvements. So, so I'm really thankful for the, for the state to, to uh, offer such programs. I bought panels, I bought the GPS, I bought the sprayer. We'll get into those later. So this is, a, like I said, an Ag Spray 300 gallon trailer with the Oklahoma kit. Uh, I've been very, very pleased with it. There's just a, a couple of exceptions and a couple of little modifications that I've made and a couple more that I'm yet to make. But uh, overall, it's, it's very handy. Uh, the booms will spray uh, 28 foot width and the boomless will spray, and on paper it sprays 36, but uh, it, it doesn't quite make it. And that's kind of one of the downfalls of the, boom, the boomless. The boomless is great on uh, uneven ground and around the edges of the fields and things like that. It, you know, it reaches out there and you don't have to worry about something snagging or anything like that, but you lose a little control because you, you, if the wind's blowing a little bit one way or the other, it may impede the, the uh, pattern and kind of give you a, a little bit of, of uh, uneven coverage. I've got it tied to our, our uh, Raven CR7 GPS in the cab. Does a really, really good job, and it's, it's very accurate. I might try to find an old video and throw a clip in here when I thought I was spraying one way but was spraying the other. It's pretty comical. Uh, it, it'll 
sure enough tell on you if uh, you don't have everything set just right. We'll talk to you later. Uh, just a couple of things. The, the, the booms, when you got them folded up like they are now, they can, uh, right out of the gate, they kind of bounced around a little bit. And uh, so I, I put some stops on uh, where it, when you draw it back, it kind of rests against the boom to kind of eliminate a lot of the back and forth on it. Uh, they had springs that held up the, the booms that they, they were adequate, but um, I had one that would disconnect every once in a while and eventually lost it on about the fifth time I was using the sprayer. And so I kind of upgraded the, the uh, springs for the, for the booms. Uh, it's got uh, no drip, um, no drip nozzles on the boom. I really like the boom because you can be very precise in your coverage and when you're in the hay fields and things, it's great. You can spray on a little bit windier day and not worry about whether your coverage is accurate or not. So I'll walk around and show you a couple of things and then I'll, I'll explain what they are and why I did it and how I did it and uh, I'll unfold it and kind of let you see that. First thing is uh, I mentioned putting the stops and you might be able to see right here, I just put some, I just put some extra bolts on there. So when it folds up, it kind of seats on the, on the frame and it, it doesn't have as much wobble on it. And then here's the spring upgrade that I did. So I got these springs from McMaster Car and I put it on with a, it's either a 60H or an 80 Master Link is my connector. And I got it on McMaster Car too, also, I believe. So these are the valves that I changed from boom to boomless. Uh, here's my boomless nozzles. They're, uh, oh gosh, I forget what they're, what they're called but I've got the ability to select one side or the other. Uh, the valve also lets me select uh, right boom, left boom, center boom. So I've got some, some pretty good options. If I'm just spraying around the edges of the fence rows and things, I can turn one side on. Uh, I added a toolbox. So I put a toolbox on it to keep extra nozzles, tools, this and that, because uh, when you're in the field, you either throw it in the floorboard of the cab and they get lost. So I put that on there. Um, what else did I do? Um, added this because I've got the little IBC totes that I can carry to the field for extra capacity. And I can just plug them straight into that and I don't have to worry about the, the hose flying out of the, the opening. I can just lock it in and pump it from the full IBC to the sprayer. Without, uh, without having to hold the hose, the discharge hose. It's got a hand one sprayer, uh, so I can still do this and that. We're fixing to spray the, the premises, uh, the yards, the barns, things like that. Uh, that's what I'm in the process of doing today is I'm flushing the system out, getting the, getting the chemicals all neutralized. We play, sprayed a little 2,4-D on some pastures uh, a few weeks ago, so I'm gonna I'm gonna flush it out, put a little uh, put a little uh, insecticide in it, a little permethrin SFR, and um, kind of spray around the house and stuff to knock the mosquitoes down, and so the kids can get out and play. It's really good for ticks and flies too. Uh, it's um, it's a good product. Uh, so high pro eight roller pump came with it uh, it's a very reliable pump and everything uh, there's cns i'll zoom in on that in a minute kind of clip it in i guess or let darcy do it um, like i said we've got this tied into the gps on the uh in the tractor the cr7 and i've got the the um uh, on off on the GPS set with the PTO light. So when I turn the PTO on, it starts painting. And when I turn the GPS, the PTO off, it stops painting. So that's how I control it. You can turn the valve on and off up there. 
uh, to start or stop the spray, but I like just turning off the PTO. And that gives me a little integration with the GPS. Uh, I don't know. I think, uh, like I said, it's been a it's been an outstanding little sprayer, and I will uh, uh, future modifications. I want to add a set of steps over here on the side and uh, fabricate them where I can stand up and kind of see over in the tank without climbing on the tire because the tire's wet. It gets a little slippery. And as soon as I can get uh, WT welding freed up to kind of come help me fabricate a step on it. I'm gonna use the old International Harvest, Harvester step that we took off to put old guy steps on the 986. And then uh, I'd like to put a tray to uh, on the tongues here somewhere to put our uh, extra chemicals and stuff. If I'm going to the field, I won't mix my chemicals till I get there. And that way, if a hose breaks, I don't have a spill on the road. Uh, and uh, what else, what else? Oh, wouldn't mind having a trailer hitch back here uh, to hook one of our flatbed wagons. And then I could put the IBC totes on top of, on the wagons, fill them up and carry, you know, 600 gallons with me. And I could either, by doing that, I could uh, have the choice of hauling the, the uh, sprayer down the road empty, which would be less uh, impact on the tires, and then fill up when I got to the field. Or I could, you know, if I had a, a large area and no place to, to refill, uh, you know, I got like 60 acres, 50 acres over at uh, Goose Creek, and I can spray um, at a 20 gallon per acre application rate, I can spray 15 acres with this machine, uh, like it's set up now. Um, so if I carry the IBCs, haul about 275 gallons. So in theory, I could spray around 45 gallons uh, if I take if I fill this up and take two IBCs with me. Um, so a little trailer hitch on it to haul the wagon behind would be kind of cool. And that way I could just take it all one trip and not have to take a wagon over there, drop it off and then come back and get the tractor. So that would be, uh, that would be a benefit. So I'm gonna unfold this thing and let you have a look at it. And then, uh, then I'm gonna put, uh, put the neutralizing agent in the tank and kind of flush it around and try to get that 2,4-D out so I don't kill Mimi's flowers when I spray for the mosquitoes. So the upgrades are, I put this bolt, I added, put a longer bolt in and added some spacers. And so when I fold it up, it, it rests against this and it doesn't have the ability to flop back and forth. There's my springs that I upgraded. So they, uh, they cannot come loose <laughs> unless something very major happens. Got a nice little Monroe shock up there to kind of keep it, uh, keep it from bouncing all over the place. Um, there's my boomless nozzles. And there's my right side, center. Left side. So I attempted to add a step there once and it was kind of hit or miss, so we're gonna put a better step on it as soon as we get an opportunity. Uh, here's the hand one. Shout out to Harold and those guys. Uh, they're, they're wonderful people to deal with. Uh, they sell liquid fertilizer. Uh, I bought that one year to try on my hay. And I bought a lot of panels. And uh, 
sprayer and seemed like I bought something else. But uh, so there's the there's the selector valve. And like I said, I, I connect the GPS to my PTO light. So it comes on when I turn the PTO on and paints and stops painting when I turn the PTO off. So I, I can be a little, uh, little good. And I'm kind of do sort of like I do breaking my hay. I get, um, kind of go around the edges about two swipes and then I start going back and forth and I get right up to the edge of where I sprayed, turn it off and and uh, make my turn and so I don't waste chemicals. I don't overlap very much. So uh, great little rig, little Kubota handles it really nicely. I think I've answered uh, any potential questions that you guys might have about uh, its use or you know the changes that I made what I like what I don't like um, if you have any additional questions just post them and I'll let Mimi do the subscribe and like and all that good stuff and I'll try to find that uh, that video where I sprayed some Johnson grass and uh, it's it's pretty good it shows you kind of how accurate the GPS is um,